so that's where I'm at. I'm in this re-evaluation of my entire life. And the only bright light that I have, and I use the word advisedly bright light, is what I uncovered in the reading of The Cosmic Serpent by Jeremy Narby. He talks about an experience that Michael Harner had back in 1961. Now in shamanic circles, Michael Harner is very well known. He's written books on how to be a shaman. He's written books describing shamanic practices. And all the way back in 1961, way before it was fashionable, he went into the Amazon and he drank the plant spirit medicine with the uh, shamans in that part of the world. Banis drops his carp in the Cyclotri Viridis, you know about this from the recipes you've seen on the YouTube films. So he drank the plant medicine and this is what happened to him. He became aware of serpents and these serpents started to have a conversation with him and they were instructing him, they were giving him information. This is what they shared. They shared that they, the serpents, come from very far away and these serpents, these life forms, they needed to find somewhere to hide and they found a class M planet as we affectionately call them now which is a planet with similar conditions to the planet Earth and at that time it was a planet without life. It was perfectly capable of supporting life but it didn't actually have any life on it at the time and these beings decided this would be an ideal place for them to hide and what they did is they did what uh, is a very famous technique in the human existence. I think about Adolf Hitler and the propaganda of the Nazi regime and the propaganda of regimes since. There's a technique which is called hiding in plain sight. It's a very interesting technique to use. And what you do is you hide in such a way that you are really visible, but you're so visible you're invisible. That sounds a bit paradoxical, but that's nonetheless how it is. So in terms of the Nazis, what they would do is they would tell a lie often enough until everyone believed it to be the truth. This is an example of hiding in plain sight. Now the hiding in plain sight I'm talking about is these serpents. What they did is they made use of the materials that were on this planet and they literally seeded it with life. Now there's a film, ironically enough, came out at the end of 2012 called Prometheus. And right at the very beginning of that film there is a humanoid life form which literally extends itself into the water of a waterfall and that seeds the planet with life. So it's just always ironic you get to see these things on the modern films. So what Michael Harner was being told in 1961 by these serpents, which he was listening to having consumed this plant medicine, is that what they did is they seeded this planet with life. That's all life. So all the plants, all the animals, all the human beings, all the four corporeal physical life forms on this planet are actually created by a particular being, a particular life form. And the life form is known to science, yes. In science we call it DNA, deoxyribose nucleic acid. This is something that all scientists agree are literally the codes of life. So every single living being whether it's something as simple as a virus or something as complex as a human being, actually contains DNA. And the DNA contains the codes which are the mechanisms for that life's creation. And life is created with enzymes, so what it is, the DNA contains a code. The code is then transcripted onto another form of very interesting material called RNA and then this RNA actually tells the enzymes what to do and that's how a human being is created from a fertilized egg and a sperm for example when they get together and they produce a single fertilized cell which then goes to divide and divide and produce all the organs and tissues that make up a human being. So this is it. Apparently this is what DNA does. DNA is literally what gives life to everything now this is the point of separation between orthodox science and shamanism because what orthodox science would say is that DNA gives life to everything, it's the code, it's the program. But orthodox science would say this material is an inert, non-living dead. Okay. Whereas what Michael Hanna discovered in his experience with the plants is the serpents were saying that they're life forms that chose to hide in plain sight and the way they chose to do this is by seeding life onto this planet 
Now this is my understanding this little bit, I've not read it but I intuit it. I reckon that the life forms which give us all life are infinitely more intelligent than we are and our level of intelligence is vastly less and this is how they're able to hide because any being scanning this planet for life forms will discover all the humans and the animals and the plants and the microbes and they will quickly conclude oh the life forms here are far too primitive to be interesting to us that's not what we're looking for we're looking for something much more evolved than that much more highly intelligent and off they go so therefore the life form the serpents successfully found a way to conceal themselves so here's another little bit of the puzzle. Scientists recognize that the code to create a human being on all the chromosomes of the DNA, that uses up 3% of the DNA. And what they chose to do was they said, so that leaves 97%. Well, because that is not actually coding for the creation of a human or a plant or an animal, we recognize that to be junk DNA. Now, you might think, sure, he's exaggerating. Seriously, this is a name that's given in all conventional scientific text it's called junk DNA so Michael Harmer's insight through his communication with these beings is that the other 97% is actually what is used to create this particular life form so then this leads us on to other things the big question of who am I and the other big question of why are we here so it seems the question to two, who am I is I am a host being which is providing a safe place for this life form to exist and this life form inhabits the entire planet so here's a wonderful thing from the lifetime life forms point of view it doesn't matter how many humans or plants or animals live or die because actually that life form is being perpetuated in all life so then why are we here well it seems that we're here to give it life to literally conceal it to disguise it to give it a home and so then that brings us up to the next question, which is, what is God? And so here I come up with my very presumptuous statement, which is I'm not going to say this is what God is, but I'm going to say from my very limited human point of view. And this is a really key phrase, because when these serpents were talking to Michael Harner in his experience, they said, you're just a human being. That's what you are. You're a human being. Just a human being. That's it. That's just a plant. That's just an animal. You're just a human being. So looking at it from that point of view, I'm creating for myself an understanding of God being the being that creates us and gives us life, is actually a being that's within us. And then this links into the religions, something you will uncover from all the mainstream religions and most of the others too, I suspect, is that they say, if you want to seek for God, don't go looking without, look within. This is the standardized thing to find God you look within and then I'm thinking good grief this seems to be far more literal than I ever imagined because here's the thing apparently I have a hundred billion cells that's what makes up one me one human being one you more than a hundred billion cells when you start to get into the mathematics of molecular biology it becomes fascinating and this is going to be a subject for an in-depth film I'm going to make and produce in the near future which is just to go into all the details you can understand, but just that simple fact alone that 97% of the DNA that we have studied has no information about how life is created. It's doing something else, that's the first thing. And the second thing is just to make one human being is more than 100 billion cells. We're talking about astronomical numbers, uh, which makes me think about miraculous events and the creation of life. DNA is all about light. That's something I experienced myself when I was having the benefit of a particular plant spirit, it showed me how DNA is just all light. And this is what they say about God. They say God is the light, the source is the light. And they say that we're all light. So that's how far I've got with this particular thought train. And I'm very early in on it all. So the whole question of the cosmic serpent and the DNA is something I'm going to explore in much more detail in the forthcoming film. So. Keep your eyes out and you'll get informed about it. Thank you.